does your car's clutch work and what keeps your car running smoothly even when you change gears or come to a stop today we're diving into the fascinating world of clutches an essential component in vehicles and many mechanical devices by the end of this video you'll clearly understand how clutches work why they're so crucial and what can go wrong if they fail let's get started the basics of clutch systems all right so let's kick things off with the basics. Why do we even need a clutch? Picture this. You have two rotating shafts. A motor drives one shaft and the other drives a different mechanism. The clutch connects these two shafts, allowing them to lock together and spin at the same speed or decouple and spin at different speeds. In a car, the engine is constantly spinning but the wheels need to stop sometimes without stalling the engine. This is where the clutch comes in. It lets us smoothly engage a spinning engine to a transmission that isn't spinning by controlling the slippage between them. Pretty cool, right? Now that we understand why clutches are necessary, let's explore how they actually work. The role of friction. Next, let's talk about friction. Friction is the resistance that one surface or object encounters when moving over another. Every surface has tiny peaks and valleys. When these peaks and valleys interlock, it becomes harder to slide the surfaces past each other. In a clutch, friction between the clutch plate and the flywheel makes it possible to connect and disconnect the engine from the transmission. So, how do these parts work together? Let's find out. Let's look at the main components involved in this process to get a clearer picture. Flywheels and clutch plates. In a car's clutch system, you've got a flywheel connected to the engine and a clutch plate connected to the transmission. When your foot is off the clutch pedal in a manual car, springs push the pressure plate against the clutch disc, which presses against the flywheel. This locks the engine to the transmission, causing them to spin at the same speed. The force the clutch can hold depends on the friction between the clutch plate and the flywheel and how much force the spring puts on the pressure plate. When you press the clutch pedal, a cable or hydraulic piston pushes on the release fork, disengaging the clutch. While this system usually works well, it's not without its issues. Let's move on to some common clutch problems. Common clutch problems. Clutches generally last between 50,000 to 70,000 miles. With careful use, they can last over 80,000 miles. However, if not maintained, they might fail as early as 35,000 miles. Overloaded trucks or frequent towing can also lead to clutch failure. The most common issue is the wear and tear of friction linings on the clutch disc. Similar to brake pads, these linings wear down over time. When most of the friction material is gone, the clutch starts to slip, eventually failing to transmit power from the engine to the wheels. Sticking clutches. Another problem is a sticking clutch. Possible causes include a broken or stretched clutch cable, defective hydraulic cylinders, air in the hydraulic line, misadjusted linkage, or mismatched clutch components. A hard clutch is also a concern. This means you must apply more force to depress the pedal fully, possibly due to issues in the pedal linkage, hydraulic system, or pivot ball. If you're experiencing any of these issues, it's crucial to diagnose them correctly. Here's how you can do that. Diagnosing clutch issues. Wondering how to diagnose clutch problems. Here's a simple test. Listen for a growling noise without pressing the clutch. If you hear something, the issue is likely in the transmission. If not, proceed to step three. A chirping noise indicates a problem with the clutch release bearing. A squealing noise suggests an issue with the pilot bearing or bushing. So we've covered how to diagnose problems with the clutch. Now, let's look at the different types of clutches in various systems. Types of clutches. Now, let's explore different types of clutches. In automatic transmissions, several clutches engage and disengage sets of planetary gears using pressurized hydraulic fluid. Electromagnetic clutches are used in air conditioning compressors, allowing the compressor to shut off while the engine runs. 
Thermostatically controlled viscous clutches are found in engine-driven cooling fans. The fluid in the clutch thickens as it heats up, causing the fan to spin faster. This helps the engine maintain its proper operating temperature. Centrifugal clutches are common in gas-powered chainsaws and lawnmowers. W-weighted arms swing out as the engine speed increases, forcing the clutch to engage. Understanding these types can help you recognize the diverse applications of clutches. But how can you ensure your clutch stays in good condition? So, next time you're driving, take a moment to appreciate the mechanism working silently beneath your feet. The clutch is a marvel of engineering, seamlessly connecting and disconnecting the power of your car's engine to the wheels. Boom! If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of gears and power, smash that like button and subscribe to Physics Daily for more explorations into the fascinating world of physics. Do you have a burning question about how something works? Leave a comment below and we might break it down in a future episode. Thanks for joining us on this adventure. And remember, science is everywhere you look, so keep exploring.